no one's caring anymore about their flex of a lifestyle. We're kind of all looking at them sideways the more they flex in this economy. Are you kidding me? It's the end of their empire because they're not relatable. We don't really give a fuck about the shit that they're selling. We don't give a fuck about their cars or their wealth. We're in a situation where people want a Kardashian cleanse. It's an end of an era. Kardashians are like coming down. They aren't relatable anymore. They like don't get the trends. There's nothing relatable about Kylie Jenner posting her $30 million wardrobe with all these Hermes bags. It's gonna be the downfall. 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 Their downfall. You're doing amazing, sweetie. Ray, it's Kim. I just want you to know that I think you are so disgusting and desperate. Following her first divorce in 2003, Kim Kardashian was working as a stylist for R&B singer Brandy. My best friend is Brandy. We'd always shop together and one day she called me and was like, will you be my stylist? And I said, sure. You know, she'd always said it. I thought she was kidding. It was through this relationship she would meet her infamous partner in crime, Brandy's brother Ray J, and take a trip to Cabo San Lucas to celebrate her birthday. During this trip, the two would film a tape that would remain relevant 20 years later. Kim Kardashian Superstar was released March 21st, 2007 by Vivid Entertainment, and Kim would immediately blame Ray J for leaking it claiming she had nothing to do with it. Eight months after its release, Keeping Up With The Kardashians premiered on TV, leading many people to speculate whether or not the tape was a publicity stunt for the new show. For the last 16 years, the Kardashian family has used the tape to garner attention, sympathy, and viewers whenever they need a boost in ratings, continuously making it a plot point in their shows and maintaining Kim's innocence, all while throwing Ray J under the bus, painting him as a villain. However, in 2022, 19 years after the tape was filmed, it would once again become a storyline on their new television show, The Kardashians. During a scene, Kanye West would gift Kim a suitcase containing a computer and a hard drive, claiming it to hold the original footage from the infamous tape. This scene went viral, and after being posted on Hollywood Unlocked's Instagram page, Ray J would comment, All of this is a lie, shaking my head, can't let them do this anymore. So true. One week later, hours before the next episode aired, Ray J's interview with Daily Mail dropped where he insisted that he never leaked a sex tape in his life, and claimed that the entire thing was a deal and partnership between Kris Jenner, Kim, and myself. According to Ray J, he initially floated the idea out to Kim as a way to boost her level of fame. Apparently, with Kim on board, they went to Kris Jenner to help make it happen, and from that point forward, Kris orchestrated the entire thing. In the interview with Daily Mail, Ray J would go on to express grief, mentioning the toll the tape has had on his mental health as well as his career, claiming the public perception of him being the one who leaked the tape has cost him many job opportunities saying, I couldn't be a part of any reputable major network television show and do Dancing with the Stars, America's Got Talent, or anything like that because of my image, because of what they made me. I'm not allowed to be in those spaces. Ray J would end the interview by saying that he isn't looking for money and just wants his daughter and son to appreciate what he's done here on Earth and know their dad doesn't go exploiting women, disrespecting women, and leaking footage of someone who didn't give permission. A couple months later, Chris would appear on The Late Late Show with James Corden and take part in a lie detector test where James asked, Did you help Kim release her tape? No. No. True. Of course it's true! But this pushed Ray J over the edge, taking to Instagram and saying, You have with the wrong person. I was just gonna handle this legally, right? And just hit you in court and just get what I'm deserved from all of y'all being foul and trying to defame me, trying to make me look bad. In one hour, I'm having them send everything I got. We going through receipts tonight, Chris. We going through receipts tonight, Kim. Everything that I got. I'm gonna let him see. On September 11th, 2022, Ray J went live on Instagram Live multiple times, showing DMs, texts, and the original contracts for the tape, all while detailing what happened behind the scenes. According to him, Kris Jenner negotiated the release of the tape with Vivid Entertainment and actually ordered Kim and Ray J to film three of them. However, after watching them, she pushed for the release of one over the others because it gives my daughter a better look. This is backed up in Ray J's live stream as he shows copies of the contract, which clearly lists three tapes. Tape number one, Cabo intro. Tape number two, Cabo 
Tape number three, Santa Barbara Sex. And he even points out that the handwriting changes as Kim took over, signing on his behalf because he was taking too long. Kim is rushing me, her mom's rushing me, let's get this shit done, come on, like, let's get it signed. Kim's with me while I'm signing my contract. She's like, hurry up, babe. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and help you. I'm gonna sign your deliverables for you so you can just rush it through. Ray J would even go as far as to compare that portion of handwriting to a birthday card he had received from Kim. Here's the bottom line to this shit with me just keeping it real. If this was real, why you didn't sue me? Why didn't you sue me? Towards the end of a 45 minute live stream, Ray J begins to get emotional when he reflects on all the damage the tape has done to him while everyone in the Kardashian-Jenner family has benefited massively from it. I think y'all can just f everybody over and it's okay. Think about all the time she was crying and like preying on other people's like realities of what really happened to them. But then for her, she just lying and praying on, on, on people's emotions to feel sorry for her, like. And once again mentions the worry he has about what his children will think of him once they're older. Fast forward to now, like, my daughter and my son is, is like, Within a week of this live stream, Ray J would post a video to Instagram claiming that he's been blocked from Instagram Live and blames Kris Jenner for making it happen. Yo, we in LA, I'm trying to go live on my sh They blocked me, B. They blocked me on live. Kris Jenner, you working, you working, you working 24 hours to try to stop me, huh? Y'all don't, y'all don't want to respond to what I said, but y'all want to get me blocked from all the sites and banned from this and banned from that. So I don't want to respond though. It's crickets over there. Following this, Ray J released a 2010 voicemail from Kim where she screams at him, refers to Whitney Houston, his girlfriend at the time, as an old hag and calls both of them disgusting. Ray, it's Kim. I just want you to know that I think you are so disgusting and desperate. I think you're honestly a sick human being and you're just so disgusting. To date, it's estimated that the tape has made $100 million, easily making it the highest grossing adult tape of all time. In an email acquired by TMZ from Vivid Entertainment's founder, Steve Hirsch, we can see the tape made $1.4 million in its first month alone. And this is far before the height of the Kardashians' fame. Kylie Jenner would first meet Tyga when she was 14 and he was 21, and three years later, media would begin circulating of them at Kylie's 17th birthday party, where a now 24-year-old Tyga hands her a bottle of tequila and tells her to take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot. A couple of days after the party, Tyga would call off his engagement to Black China and would fail to show up at a club appearance at Greystone Manor in West Hollywood after the venue refused entry to underaged Kylie Jenner. This would result in rumors circulating that the two were dating. However, Tyga would deny these rumors on an episode of The Breakfast Club. Now, are you smashing or now? Are you red shirting until she turned 18? <laughs> no, I'm not dating Kylie. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not dating that, so I just want to get that out the way. And uh, I want to be clear to everybody that I didn't leave my family um, to be with Kylie. Yeah. Have you been contacted by like any law enforcement? Because that it. If, if people believe the blogs, it could be incriminating. Yeah, they said she had a room in, uh, in your house. However, following Tyga calling Drake fake in an interview with Vibe magazine, Drake shot back in the final track off his hit album, If You're Reading This It's Too Late, saying, Oh you tired, it's so childish calling my name on the world stage, you need to act your age, not your girl's age. Just eight days after the album was released, Kanye appeared on The Breakfast Club and said, I think he, I think he got in early. I think he was smart. <laughs> 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 they closer in age than a lot of relationships that I know, you know. He's 25, she'll be 18 in August. Like, 
Yeah, I, I, I knew Tiger was smart, you know? <laughs> Supposedly, there is a portion of this interview that was edited out where Kanye says he thinks they're in love, but it has to be kept a secret. A couple months later, Tyga would refuse Cal State Fullerton's request that he not bring an underaged Kylie to an 18 plus concert at the college. Following this, Tyga would get Kylie's name tattooed on his arm and release a song called Pleaser, which features a graphic line saying, T nasty, about to catch a felony for it, which has been interpreted as a reference to dating Kylie while she's a minor. Tyga would claim that the song was written two years before it was released, however, he released another song shortly after, titled Stimulated, featuring the line, They say she young, I should have waited, she's a big girl dog when she's stimulated. On July 27th, 2015, Khloe Kardashian appeared on the cover of Complex Magazine, and in an interview for them, she said she thinks her 17-year-old sister Kylie dating a 25-year-old Tyga counts as a special case that people shouldn't judge. Kylie is not a normal 17-year-old. You're not gonna say, so what are you doing this weekend? And have her say, having a slumber party at my girlfriend's or going to prom. That's not what Kylie does. Kylie is taking business meetings and bought her first house. Or she's going on a private plane with Carl Lagerfeld to take a meeting. That's not even what people do in their 30s. It's a rare circumstance, so let's treat this as a special case. Following this interview, Rob Kardashian, Kylie's half-brother, would announce that he and Black China, Tyga's ex-fiance, were expecting a child, while Kylie prepares for her 18th birthday. So crazy. <laughs> with Kylie turning 18, her and Tyga's relationship became a segment on Keeping Up With The Kardashians, and this becomes the beginning of their official relationship. However, in a 2016 Complex Magazine interview, Kylie mentioned taking a temporary break from Tyga, and seven months later, in 2017, the couple publicly announced their breakup. One month after Kylie's breakup with Tyga, she was spotted holding hands with rapper Travis Scott at Coachella in 2017. Kylie mentioned in an interview with GQ that after Coachella, she spontaneously decided to join Travis on tour. And one month after Coachella, she became pregnant with her first child. However, one year after the birth of Stormy, they would break up after Kylie caught him cheating on her. I pretended I didn't know you, went along with whatever narrative you guys wanted to no matter how much like bullshit i got from it but to say you don't know me and you've never been with me when you've definitely been with me when everybody's seen you with me when i have pictures and videos of you with me come on you cheat on that every single night the whole city sees it don't do this one year after the breakup they would get back together and announce that kylie was pregnant once again and two months later they would find themselves under the microscope after the horrible events of astroworld astroworld an annual music festival ran by travis scott was cancelled in 2021 following the death of eight people during travis's performance with two more succumbing to their injuries and dying in hospital over the following days in total 10 people, aged 9 to 27, died as a result of being trampled and crushed. We begin tonight with the heartbreaking concert tragedy in Houston. Authorities launching a criminal investigation to find out what went wrong at the Astro World Music Festival. With 25 people being evacuated to local hospitals and more than 300 people being treated in the field hospital at the festival, an Astro World victim's attorney later claimed that over 4,900 people sustained injuries that evening with many people pointing the finger at Travis's marketing of the event and his behavior on stage, leading to the death of the festival goers. Videos advertising the festival featured footage of people hopping fences and running past security to get into the show. And during the actual festival, hundreds of people did just that, destroying the VIP security entrance, bypassing the checkpoint and running into the crowd, leading to the festival being over capacity. At one point during the show, multiple staff moved to treat someone lying unresponsive in front of a reserved section, when the crowd pushed through multiple barriers, leading to the staff not having space to treat the victim, leading to the medical staff driving an ambulance through the crowd to try and make space. After Travis Scott noticed the ambulance, he pointed at it and yelled, what the f is that? <laughs> 
that following this, two members from Travis's team came on stage and had a quick conversation with him, which ended with him turning to the crowd and saying he wants to hear the ground shake before dropping his song Upper Echelon. The result of this was members of the crowd climbing onto the ambulance and dancing on the roof, preventing it from making its way to treat victims in the crowd. This ambulance would appear on Instagram stories posted by Kylie and would remain up overnight as stories began circulating about the tragedy that took place. Later on in the night, Travis stopped mid-song to watch the security team remove an unconscious body from the crowd before continuing the show. At this point, festival goers in the crowd began chanting, Stop the show! Stop the show! Stop the show! Stop the show! However, their request went unheeded. At this point, Kylie, her three-year-old daughter, and Kendall were seen being escorted out of the venue by security, but would claim they didn't know what took place until the next day. On the show, The Kardashians, Kendall would even lie, claiming that she was in Miami that weekend, despite there being videos of her at Astroworld. Between the whirlwind of news coverage detailing the horrific events, and Kylie's footage publicly posted to her Instagram featuring the medical staff struggling to save lives, as well as the footage of her rushing from the event, left people with a bad taste in their mouths once she claimed to not know what was happening. Following the Astroworld tragedy, people began posting clips of Travis's behavior on and off stage, including a post from an ex-manager of his, Shane Morris, who claimed that after having a seizure while in a basement with Travis, Travis would walk away and leave him for dead. Travis Scott is the worst person I worked with in my entire career in music. I'm Travis Scott's former manager. I'm the one who had a seizure, and I'm the one that he left for dead in a basement in Los Angeles. The stories coming out of Astroworld and all the videos documenting the evidence are quite clear, and they align with what I know about Travis Scott. When he sees people in harm or danger, he tends to only continue thinking about himself. More accounts of Travis's behavior began coming to light, such as when he played a festival called Summer Jam and kicked a Summer Jam hired photographer off stage for doing what he was hired to do. Hey, 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 get your dirty ass off the stage, bro. Go. Now, you. Off. Yes, I don't know you, bro. Go, go, go. I don't care if you're working for Summer Jam. Bye. You're not working for Travis. There was also a clip of Travis jumping into a crowd at a show, accusing someone in the crowd of trying to take his shoe, and encouraging the crowd to hurt him. Get that mother get him. You tried to take my shoe? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Boom. As well as footage of Travis yelling homophobic slurs while threatening fans. I ain't cool with none of you who just sitting here looking like a bunch of Smashing and breaking a DJ's laptop during his performance. Slamming a sign at a nightclub. <laughs> Punching an audio engineer that was working at a venue he was playing at. And before the alleged assault had already shoved the DJ who was performing and was taking the phones of people who were taking pictures of him and throwing the phones across the room. Scott then came around to his area, which is off stage in a cordoned off area, and punched him in the head. Now the victim is unable to turn his head. He ran around the speaker and attacked me. Obviously my neck is... Up. As well as posts from venue security guards claiming that Travis would encourage fans in the audience to rush the stage, saying, Security can't stop you all. Travis Scott's history of violence and reckless behavior that led up to the death of 10 people at his music festival made fans of Kylie Jenner feel uncomfortable when she began throwing Astro World themed birthday parties for her two children. However, one year after Astro World, more cheating allegations began circulating, and in January of 2023, Kylie and Travis would break up once again. The announcement of Kylie and Travis Scott's breakup came at a peculiar time, as the same day an article was published on the Daily Mail detailing a lawsuit against Kris Jenner regarding an alleged essay. According to Daily Mail, former Kardashian bodyguard Mark McWilliams alleges that Kris Jenner grabbed his crotch multiple times and would expose herself to him while he was still working with the family in 2017. One of these instances allegedly happened in Chris's Bentley after being ordered to sit in the front passenger seat. 
After following orders, Chris, without warning, placed her right hand on the inside upper left thigh and groin area, caressing McWilliams. After refusing her advances each time, he was ultimately fired from the job. According to McWilliams' declaration, in his original complaint, Chris was repeatedly and frequently causing her body to come into intimate and physical contact with his body, citing massaging his neck, resting her hand on his inner thigh and groin area, causing her pelvis to rub against his back, and exposing parts of her body to him all without his consent or approval. Mark McWilliams also alleged racial discrimination, including pervasive and cruel mockery, harassment, belittling, and otherwise humiliating mistreatment due to his race. After being fired by the family, Mark claimed that he endured harassment, intimidation, and otherwise threatening misconduct in an effort to dissuade or prevent him from bringing any form of action against Chris for the unlawful misconduct. Over the years, the Kardashian-Jenner family have found themselves accused of cultural appropriation time and time again. Most recently, with Kendall Jenner's tequila brand, 818. The advertisement was regarded as tone deaf, as extremely wealthy Kendall Jenner sported a look common to the Mexican stereotypes of indigenous women and walked around farmers making her product. Kylie Jenner posted a clip of her family and friends taking a shot of tequila on her birthday, where Kim can be seen spitting it out and saying, so Kylie and Kim would begin doing damage control over social media, claiming that the tequila she spit out wasn't 818. However, other pictures from the birthday party show bartenders wearing 818 hats and pouring 818 reserve tequila, a more expensive line of 818. It's also worth mentioning that the normal bottles of 818 have been accused of ripping off a small Texan tequila company that was founded back in 2012 called Tequila 512, as the basic 818 bottle looks a lot like Tequila 512s. Although Kendall isn't Mexican, the Kardashian Jenners have often been accused of race changing seemingly changing complexions every few months while wearing different clothes found in different communities. One of the biggest examples was when Kim appeared in a 2022 issue of Vogue magazine that was released during February, Black History Month, where she can be seen with darker skin. One of the photos features styling and posing remarkably similar to a photo of Nina Simone, a singer-songwriter and civil rights activist born in 1933. Another photo in the magazine also appears quite similar to this one of Beyonce. There have also been some outfits that have landed Chloe in hot water, such as this one worn to a club on Halloween, where she can be seen posing holding four leashes connected to women with dog collars. There are also photos of her wearing headdresses, even going as far as to pose with the miniature teepee. Over the years, there have been many moments from both the Kardashians and the Jenners that make them come across as unpleasant people. Hashtag, I only like black. That's what I would say. All I get called is a lover all day long. Who the cares? Most recently, the Kylie and Selena Gomez drama, where Kylie Jenner and Hailey Bieber posted photos of their eyebrows after Selena Gomez posted a TikTok where she says she laminated her brows too much. It's unclear if this was actually directed at Selena or not, especially since both Kylie and Selena have left comments defending each other. However, it wouldn't be the first time a vague Kylie post has been considered shade, as back in 2020, the day after Kylie's ex-friend, Megan the Stallion, was shot in the foot by Tory Lanez after leaving a pool party at Kylie's mansion, Kylie posted a photo only featuring her foot with the caption, Thank you God for another beautiful day. In 2016, Kim posted an almost fully nude photo to Twitter featuring small black bars censoring her body. When 20-year-old actress Chloe Grace Moretz replied to the photo, saying, I truly hope you realize how important setting goals are for young women, teaching them we have so much more to offer than just our bodies. Kim clapped back with, let's all welcome Chloe to Twitter since no one knows who she is. After Chloe Moretz tweeted that everyone in this industry needs to get their heads out of a hole and look around to realize what's actually happening in the real world. 
Khloe Kardashian would inject herself into the conversation, saying, Is this the hole you're referring to? Tagging Khloe Moretz on Twitter with a photo of Moretz's face and another photo of a woman in a red bathing suit experiencing a wardrobe malfunction. Khloe Kardashian didn't just post an inappropriate photo of a woman being exposed at the beach, but she got the wrong person, putting Khloe Moretz on blast while also shaming a completely random person, spreading sensitive photos of her to her 30 million followers. Kendall also has a history of doing things considered to be rude, such as mocking Addison Rae on TikTok, not listening to an employee at the Metropolitan Museum of Art when asked to please not step over the rope while Bella Hadid listens and goes around, from routinely parking in handicapped parking spaces. Hey Kendall, a lot of people are upset you're parking in the handicapped spot. What do you say to people that are kind of upset about this? not paying for meals after not being served alcohol while underaged, and throwing $20 bills at the staff when confronted, not tipping at restaurants. Rating celebrities, I met while I was a hostess in Manhattan Pot. One. She was fine, but she tipped $20 on a $500 dinner bill. Do with that information what you will. For that, I'm giving her a two out of 10. So next up we have Kendall Jenner. This is another one where I unfortunately did not have the best experience with them. She used to come in all the time and was pretty cold towards staff. She also usually has some Someone speak for her and doesn't speak directly to staff. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and say she's just shy. For my experiences with her, I have to give her like a four out of 10. Making an assistant carry an umbrella over her head to driving erratically after a paparazzi and then stopping her car to lay on the horn after the paparazzi stopped and pulled over. What's your problem, Sando? There's a lot of space over there. while she continued to tailgate the vehicle in front of her, continuing to lay on the horn. In an episode of The Kardashians, Chris's boyfriend, Corey Gamble, calls Kendall out on her behavior over the phone. Let me tell you one thing, just so you understand. Kendall, you've been a rude person since for years, man. You all, you're an asshole when you feel like it. You, you get riled up for no reason. You. It's obvious that the Kardashian-Jenner family feel very important, and it's clear they don't care what we think about them. An example of this is when they shut down an entire ride at Disneyland so they could be the only ones on the whole ride. When the Kardashians cut the line, get the ride to themselves and make us common folk wait and watch them. Typical. Oddly enough, this isn't the only time the family has had problems with people at Disneyland. I'm waiting in line. It's been like 20 something minutes and I haven't moved from the spot. You know, it's like the right break or what? Someone whispers to me, dude, the, they're waiting, the Kardashians are about to get on the boat. They had their own security. So they have like Disney like they hired, people in plaid, but yeah. they had dudes dressed in black. And you know I they go up to take a picture and they were like immediately <laughs> in my face. You no pictures. If you take one more picture, I'm going to send you out of the park. We're going to contact Disney and they're going to have you kicked out of the park immediately. Because... But like a dude with his kids behind me was taking a picture and the guy's like, and he gave him the whole, this whole threatening thing. And then the dude like put the phone down and still went like, mm -hmm. and then the guard was like, yeah, I like how you tried to sneak one. Yeah. Like really like how you tried to sneak one. Wow. Whatever. That guy's got to do that all day. Kids. With a history of their family mistreating working class people, it was especially rich when they sat down to tell the world, get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Speaking of people not wanting to work, the Kardashian Jenners have a long history of not paying their employees. Kim specifically is being sued by her former employees that clean and maintain her California home, claiming that Kim failed to pay overtime, cover expenses, and provide legally mandated breaks. The former staff also alleged that Kim would withhold 10% of their pay for taxes while not actually reporting their employment to tax authorities. The lawsuit filed by Los Angeles attorney Frank 
Mike Kim said plaintiffs never received any pay stubs, were not given their required rest breaks, were not provided a means to record all their hours, were not paid all their hours, were not reimbursed for employment expenses, were not paid all their overtime wages, and were not paid their wages upon termination of employment. A former editor for the Kardashian app took to Twitter after Kim's get up and work comment, saying that she worked days, nights, and weekends, and could only afford groceries from the 99 cent store, and would even call in sick because she couldn't afford to put gas in her car in order to get to the office. Once they found out she was freelancing on the side to make enough money to get by, she was reprimanded. Although this person was barely getting by, at least they were being paid. Both the Kardashians and Jenners have a history of using unpaid internships to staff their businesses and help them with day-to-day -day tasks. And staff at Kylie Cosmetics are reportedly ordered to not look at Kylie when she visits the facility. And although Kylie Cosmetics are advertised as not being tested on animals, the employees running the production line are expected to test the makeup products out on themselves. Additionally, Kylie uses her housekeepers to demo swatches on their arms so she doesn't have to wash hers afterwards. Besides their history of mistreating people they believe are beneath them, the Kardashian-Jenner family has routinely taken advantage of their fans by shilling cheap and at times fake products to them, such as weight loss lollipops, slim tea, waist trainers, and laxative smoothies. However, some of the larger examples include the Kardashian card. The worst offender may be the new Kardashian Kardashian card, named for the reality show Celebutant. A prepaid MasterCard that targeted teenagers that featured extremely high fees. A six-month card cost $59.95 just to set up, $1.50 to use the ATM, $1 for balance checks, $1.50 to speak to customer service, $9.95 to replace a lost card, and $6 to cancel the account. Although not criminal, the card was clearly targeting the youth, and after a firestorm of criticism, the family distanced itself from the card, slowly letting it fade into obscurity. In 2022, Kim, Kendall, Kylie, Chris, Chloe, Courtney, and her ex-boyfriend Scott Disick would find themselves in another lawsuit seeking $40 million, following an Instagram giveaway that never resulted in the winners receiving their items, and everyone who entered having their information sold to advertisers. Although the lawsuit surrounds just one giveaway, the family has pulled the same scam multiple times. So basically the way that it works is that the brands have to pay pay some sort of fee. In this instance, it's $8,500 and also give Chloe some product for her to keep. And what's really interesting is that it doesn't say product also for the winners. Nowhere in the email does it say this, but I'm assuming if there are real winners, they would also have to give product for the winners. And so Chloe gets off with, you know, about $10,000 from each brand plus free products. All the participating brands are listed on another Instagram page and it'll say everyone follow everything that this page is following for a chance to win. And so if she has like 90 people, that's 90 times about 10,000 plus free products. And that's how the Kardashians scam everyone into stocking their second nursery when they have all the money in the world to afford it and also make money for some followers. On September 17th, 2021, Kylie Jenner launched her swimsuit line, Kylie Swim, and after customers started receiving their items, Kylie received backlash for both the quality and the designs. This definitely is just for an Instagram picture. Remember how I said the last suit was the worst bathing suit I've ever tried on? This one just beat it. Retailing for $40 to $85, customers drew comparisons between Kylie Swim and AliExpress, citing messy tailoring, sloppy stitching, and the the use of cheap materials making the bathing suit see-through. I literally can't even show you guys this one, which is super disappointing. If I move a centimeter, something's gonna pop out. With no padding or lining, it became evident that the suits were designed for people with a figure comparable to Kylie's. A figure that's the result of years of plastic surgery. I would say that this sort of failure of Kylie Swim really points to people just kind of being over the Kardashian businesses. In 2021, Kim would find herself in trouble once again after advertising NFTs on Instagram and not disclosing that she was paid to do so. According to Washington Post, Kim was paid $250,000 to promote Emacs tokens sold by Ethereum Max to her 330 million plus Instagram followers because she was advertising what is considered an investment product and didn't disclose her payment to do so. The Security and Exchange Commission charged Kim $1.26 million 
dollars for leading potential investors astray. Ironically, Kim has been scamming since at least 2003, when she was still working as Brandy's stylist. Brandy's mother, also manager, lent Kim a credit card to purchase clothing for her daughter, but after using it to spend $120,000 at a Kardashian-owned boutique on clothes for herself, she was ultimately sued. It's also recently come to light that when Kim was flower bombed by a supposed PETA activist while walking the red carpet in West Hollywood at the launch of her perfume, True Reflection, back in 2012, it was actually a member of her PR team and not someone from PETA. According to Kim's former media strategist, Shiraz Hassan, the entire stunt was orchestrated in order to secure Kim some headlines that would publicize her new perfume, and insisted that Kim was in on the attack the entire time. In every essence of the word, the Kardashians are the original influencers, but following them in the early 2000s was a lot different from today. Watching people spend exuberant amounts of money used to be entertaining. The lavish parties, vacations, dinners, cars, clothes. It was a novelty to see how different life can be for the wealthy. However, in 2023, you can't go 24 hours without being inundated by influencers, showing off their perfect manufactured lives, filled with expensive of clothing, plastic surgery, and luxurious beaches as their backdrop. Influencer fatigue is growing, and as social media shifts to more raw and authentic content, the Kardashians are getting left in the dust. For years, something that's been mentioned every time the family is brought up is, what do they even do? And that statement feels more real now than ever. You can find thousands of people on social media that do everything the Kardashian Jenners do, that also have something going on in their lives, whether that's music, acting, or just having a life outside of posting heavily edited photos of themselves, you can get everything and more from countless people. I describe their presence on social media as just showing up. It's as if they're so used to something being popular or successful just because of their name that they don't bother putting any effort into it. And with a new generation of people who grew up watching beautiful, wealthy influencers from day one, the novelty the Kardashians once had to offer is completely missed on these people, leading to them fighting for relevance on TikTok. This year is really about like the year of just realizing stuff. 